vegan, got sick, stopped being vegan, had to go back to eating meat. Can you just not? Why are so many vegan influencers having health issues and reintroducing animal products back into their diet? Or why is your favorite vegan influencer not talking about being vegan anymore? Let's talk about it. So in the last 10 years, the vegan movement has kind of increased in popularity, largely fueled by the efforts of vegan content creators that shared recipes and their lifestyle with the world. And in doing so, like really advocated for a plant-based lifestyle. And these influencers have leveraged the ability and power of social media to get the vegan word out there and influence a lot more people into either going vegan, going more plant-based, or at least thinking about reducing their animal consumption. However, lately I've realized there's a large amount of vegan influencers, some of which I love, that are either going back to eating animal products, leaving veganism, moving away from vegan exclusive content, or remaining vegan and not talking about it anymore on their social media. Personally, as a vegan content creator myself, I've actually had this thought about creating less and less vegan specific content. And I think the reasons for this, some are quite obvious and some you may not have thought about. So I thought I'd share. I think the main ones, the obvious ones are like dietary and health challenges, but there's also this like societal pressure, backlash and online criticism that plays a huge role as well as mental health concerns. And then the one that most people don't think about is actually the financial stability of vegan content creators and brands not choosing to work with them anymore. So let's start with the dietary and health concerns. Some content creators have faced some pretty serious health issues and nutrient deficiencies on a plant-based diet. But if I'm perfectly honest when I'm looking at the creators that blame the vegan diet on their health issues I'm actually not really surprised that they got sick like when I look back at who's actually gone back to eating meat it's always always the vegan content creators that have the most extreme most restrictive <clears throat> raw food diets <laughs> Like every time. I mean, I'd be nutrient deficient too if all I ate was a thousand calories of fruits and vegetables every day. I mean, you can't just ingest vitamins from breathing air, unfortunately. <laughs> Raw food diets are notoriously low in calories and protein and the bioavailability of some of the nutrients in raw food is a lot lower compared to if you were to cook that food. Just like eat normally. I've been vegan for like 12 years. I eat like cooked food, a whole wide range of fats and salts and processed and not processed, and I've never had any issues. I've also supplemented with the Complement Essentials, which gives you all of the daily vitamins and minerals that you need to thrive on a vegan diet. And before any of you omnivores are like, it's a supplement, uh, that means it's not natural, that means the vegan diet isn't good for you. Listen, look around, we do not live in a natural world. And by the way, the the milk, the eggs, and the meat that you're eating are from animals that are fed fortified feed. So you're actually getting supplements in your diet either way. So we're both supplementing here. If you want to try the Compliments Essential multivitamin, I do have a code, you get 15% off, and I'll leave a link in the description box down below. They are awesome. Listen, I'm not saying that some creators don't have like legit issues out there and health concerns. One of my favorite vegan accounts actually went back to eating animal products because all of a sudden she developed Develop this really strong intolerance to basically all plant protein. I mean, that's tough. And I get that there are legit reasons out there, but blaming your health issues from lack of nutrients when you refuse to eat more than 1200 calories and only ate raw fruits and vegetables in your strange, like societally approved, disordered eating diet on veganism just isn't really fair. And it's not the bigger picture. If you're gonna eat a restrictive diet and then complain that you didn't get enough nutrients, I mean, you're really just doing the vegan movement a disservice because most of us are not eating that way. And this brings me to like my second topic, like were they actually like vegan for the animals in the first place or were they just eating an extreme plant-based diet? Well, let's go back to that creator that I really love that pretty much was forced back into an Omni diet. She wrote a blog post and talked a lot on her social media about how difficult this was for her, how morally it just went against everything that she like knew and believed. Her morals were completely compromised. She felt really horrible ab about it. She tried everything that she could to not have to go back to eating animals and animal products. But at the end of the day, like it just wasn't an option to be vegan anymore. And like that sucks. Like I couldn't imagine my like entire ethos being thrown into the wind because of a health issue. Like that sucks. And I totally 
totally, totally feel for her. And I would argue that yes, she was vegan and she was vegan for the animals and it wasn't just like a quick, like I'm gonna be extreme on social media. Because some of these other people I have noticed go to the like next extreme. Like instead of just going and eating like a normal person, they go into another extreme restrictive diet or just another extreme diet. Like why are so many switching from raw food vegan to an all carnivore diet? <laughs> There is obviously something wrong there and their relationship with food just isn't really healthy whether they're eating a vegan diet or not. And not to toot my own horn here, but every time I see a creator like that, it's like so predictable. So honestly, I'm convinced that these people weren't really vegan in the first place. They used social media and extreme diet to gain popularity. And then when it didn't work for them anymore, they kind of just like went to the other extreme, which tells me like, not to say it on a high horse here morally, but like, I just can't wrap my head around it. Like if I couldn't eat plant-based protein anymore and then I had to eat animal protein, the last thing I would be doing on my social media is like advocating to kill more animals. Like even though personally I had to make this really tough decision, I wouldn't be pushing other people to also <laughs> eat meat. It just like, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, it doesn't. So yeah, like I said, I think a lot of the time people like that, that are on those extreme diets, they're really just looking for the next extreme diet to make money off of on their social media. It does make all of us look bad. And I think that that's where I get so frustrated because there's always going to be like some article or some news story about like, vegan got sick, stop being vegan, had to go back to eating meat that like we all get thrown in our faces and we deal with enough of this criticism in the first place. So like, can you just not? So now let's talk a bit about why a lot of creators are kind of moving away from vegan specific content or only vegan content and broadening their horizons. I think a lot of it has to do with mental health and being online. I mean, imagine getting not only comments from the people that like actively dislike what you're doing. In this case, it's like meat eaters, it's omnis, it's people that think that you're ridiculous. They call into question your entire ethos. They call into question the legitimacy of it, that it's doable, and you're getting criticism all the time, if not like just straight up hate. Now, imagine if on top of that, you also got criticized by the very community that you're part of. And this happens a lot to vegans. It's happened a lot to me where you're too vegan for the normal person and you're not vegan enough for the vegans. At some point, you just, read hate from every single angle and you're just like, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm exhausted. And that can like really take a toll on your mental health. I know that there was a period of time where I was getting a lot of that and I just stopped going online and sharing things and that was detrimental to my business and my advocacy. I wasn't talking about it anymore and I just kind of stopped and it was tough. It's tough to have nothing but negativity all the time and unfortunately the loudest voices are always the negative ones. Yes, you also get like some praise and whatnot, but that's not really what sticks out to you, of course. And then on top of like just straight up criticism about how you're not vegan enough, you can also get criticized for compromising your own values. If you're working with specific brands, for example, or if you're shopping at certain places or you're bringing into question or talking about really relevant topics like is secondhand leather okay to buy versus brand new vegan leather, which is essentially plastic. These conversations all can get people really fired up. And a lot of the time, you just don't wanna deal with the comments. And I get, this is the life that we chose, we are online. I understand why people are diversifying. And that's actually one of the reasons why I personally wanted to diversify a lot of my content and bring in more travel stuff and, and hair and makeup and fashion and that sort of thing, just so it's not so like vegan, vegan, rah, 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 and often can be like very negative. Even if I am trying to teach people how to cook vegan food and teaching people veganism in a really lighthearted way. And then lastly, I think the financial stability aspect and sponsorships is a huge one. So. We all know content creators, influencers, myself included, we rely on brand sponsorships to make all of this happen. And while it may look like there's a ton of sponsorship opportunities out there, there's tons of sponsors. If you're a vegan and cruelty-free creator, you already are niched out into a very small pool of brands that you can work with, which stifles and kind of limits the amount of money that you can make. They often have lower budgets. So you can really only work with vegan specific products or products that are just happen to be vegan, but a lot of the time they don't really think of you as the per first person to go to. And over the years, I've worked with a ton of really big vegan brands and I've worked with a ton of really small ones, but here's what's happened. Lately, those opportunities now for a lot of vegan creators, myself included, have been taken away because as veganism became more mainstream and normies and, and omnis were eating more and more or drinking more and more plant-based products, all of a sudden, all these vegan 
brands were more mainstream and what they wanted was not a vegan specific creator, they wanted a normal creator. Someone that ate a normal diet that just happened to also use some plant-based products. Which like, I get. They want to diversify their audience. Working with someone that's not vegan definitely gives them a wider audience, gives them wider reach. But now what, what, what do we do with the small amount of the pie that already was so difficult to share amongst all of us? So brands like Beyond Meat partnered with celebrities like Kim Kardashian to talk about their chicken product. I mean, it sucks. So now we aren't getting the regular deals and we're not getting the vegan deals, which means that we now have to also diversify our content, which includes not making the content vegan specific. Because if you are pushing vegan, 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 you are automatically a vegan creator, which pigeonholes you and people don't wanna work with you. And that's ridiculous and it sucks, but it is what it is. And then on top of that, because veganism is rising, which is amazing, but the market is more saturated also for new influencers and old vegan influencers. So there's a lot more competition for the small amount of pie that we already got. So like I said, we're diversifying, I'm going to be creating a lot of, it'll still be vegan, I'm still vegan, and the meals that I make just happen to be vegan, I just may not call it out as much, because, you know, I want a grocery store brand deal too. <laughs> Pay me to cook, please. Oh, and then on top of that, if you do get a vegan brand sponsorship, I got a vegan brand sponsorship, okay. Come closer, here's the tea. I got a sponsorship with a very large vegan egg company that I worked with. It did super well. The campaign was crazy successful and then they refused to pay me. <gasps> so it's been like two years now and I still haven't gotten paid. They ghosted me for a full year. And then when I started like threatening that I was gonna go public with it, then they started answering, but they told me that they didn't have any more money to pay me with. But then when I opened my Instagram account, they're paying like professional athletes. So that's also the other thing. And I've seen it happen with a couple vegan brands where they just refuse to either pay the going rate for influencers or they just don't pay them at all, which is what happened to me. So if you're wondering why suddenly your favorite vegan creator is no longer creating vegan only content, maybe that provides a little bit of insight into why. Honestly, I've been loving seeing a whole other side to a lot of my favorite vegan creators. Some of them like, I didn't know that that was their hobby and I didn't know what, that's, what their house looked like and I didn't know that that's how they did their makeup. Like I think it's really interesting and I'm gonna continue to support them and their products that they suggest, if I love it, of course, and you know, support all of their brand deals so that brands can see that they do add value to this market. And so I encourage all of you guys to, if you have a creator that you really love to, even if you're not interested in the product, engage with the posts because then they hopefully will be able to continue to do this and not like have to go find a real job like a lot of other vegan creators have. Now, the other ones that blame veganism for their detrimental health, don't go give them hate, but side eye, extreme side eye from my end. <laughs> if you're wondering why my content is different and a lot of people's content is different, that's why. And I thought we'd have a little chat about it because I kind of wanted to do more of these like just talking videos here about different topics or almost like a visual podcast, but not, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh, and don't forget, if you would like to thrive on a vegan diet, like I am, without any health issues and with all of your nutrients, use code EDGYVEG. The link for Complement Essentials is in my description box. They have a ton of other products too and the 15% works on all of them every time that you order. Well, I guess that's all for me today. I have the rest of this giant thing of water to drink. More ex-vegans to roll my eyes at. Bye! Health journey, 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 journey. So I feel like health is a journey, 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 journ